Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. It is Friday, January the 20th, and 35 years ago today, my husband asked me to marry him, and I said yes. So it's our yes day anniversary, <laughs> and it coincides with date night. How fun is that? So we're going to be going out tonight, which is really great. Our devotions are coming from Joyce Meyer's book, her devotion called Trusting God Day by Day. So our title of our devotion is called Let Joy Into Your Life. Oh, this is good. Our scripture comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 30, verse 5. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Part of disciplining ourselves to celebrate life is refusing <clears throat> to live in mourning. There is a time to mourn, but we dare not let it become a way of life. The Bible says that weeping or mourning, grief, endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Morning without the you. In morning as in the start of a new day. There are things that happen in life that rightfully need to be mourned over, but joy always returns to balance things out. We must let the joy back into our lives after times of sadness and not feel guilty about enjoying life after disappointment or even tragedy has struck. There is a time to mourn and a time to rejoice, but we must not live in the state of mourning. And I'm going to pause right there because <clears throat> as Joy said, and it's in the word, there are things that happen in life that we need to mourn. It's unhealthy not to mourn a loss. Um, when I went through the difficulty I went through in 2019, it... I mean, we're talking for most of 2020. I didn't realize it, but I was in mourning and I had no joy. I wanted my joy restored because I'm a energetic, joyful person. I'm a positive uh, optimist. I'm always looking for the good. I look for the good in people. I expect that everybody I meet is good at, the, at their heart and at their core. So I am somebody who is vulnerable to people taking advantage of me in that respect. And I've asked the Lord to give me great wisdom, but I always believe the best. And being in a state of mourning was no fun for me, let me tell you. It was a circumstance that happened, schemes and plots against me, my name uh, defamed, um, humiliation, public humiliation. It was very, a very, very difficult time. And uh, the Lord told me to keep my peace. Genesis, I was to, um, he was going to fight for me. He was going to be my vindicator. And he had people coming to me with words that were encouragement. I had things coming up on my social media feeds that were, it was the word of God, things I'd never seen before. <laughs> and and something would come up like the Lord is your vindicator, stand firm, be quiet, and he will fight for you. Things like that just popping up. And then people coming to me and saying the exact same scripture I just saw on my social media feed. So God was there in the middle of all of that, but I had no real enjoyment in that period of time that I can recall. It was a time of mourning. And the temptation to stay in that place of mourning is very high. And don't you know the devil is going to be there to make sure you stay there longer than you should. Grief and mourning can be taken to a very unhealthy place by the enemy of our souls. Because he knows on the other side. Now, if you're mourning the loss of a loved one, the thought that you're moving on and forgetting them is a thought that naturally comes. You don't feel like you'll ever be able to live life and enjoy Christmas, enjoy their birthdays, enjoy family vacations because they're not there with you. And that's an under, it's understandable. Don't ever 
feel that it's a badge of honor or shows how what great love and devotion you had for that loved one to remain in a place of mourning. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Let me tell you. Okay. Someone needs to hear this. To live in a constant state of mournful remembrance is not a badge of honor. It doesn't show how devoted and how much love you had for that person. Showing your love for them is moving on. Okay. Letting the Holy Spirit take you to new places of joy and living your life to the full. Because let me tell you right now, you are halted in your life when grief controls it. It becomes a spirit of grief, not the emotion of grief, a spirit of grief and depression and death come upon you. I'm sorry. I'm not going to embrace any of that. I will feel my feelings. I, I lost my eldest sister in 2014 and there are days, her birthday or whatever, some days it just takes me by surprise. I miss her. but I haven't stopped living. I haven't stopped feeling joy and looking forward to good things in life. Grief is always with you. The, the, not grief, not grief. That's, I didn't say that correctly. The love you feel for your loved ones who have gone on and missing them is always going to be there. It always is because you loved them. That's the price you pay for love. But you don't have to stay in a frozen, halted, stagnant place of grief. That is not God's plan and that is not God's best. You trust the Lord to walk you through that grief. You allow the Holy Spirit to comfort you and lead you on to the, to the things he wants to bless your life with. Joy comes in the morning not mourning sadness, mourning as in the next day, the next stage of your life. There is joy. That's a promise and God cannot lie. Okay, moving on. Someone needed that. Part of life is dealing properly with sadness and disappointment. We cannot avoid them. We're going to experience sadness and disappointment, betrayal, whatever you want to, to say. But we can recover. I was saddened when I learned that a trusted employee had been stealing from our ministry. Yikes. But I rejoiced that God brought the wrongdoing to light and it was discovered. I have a time of mourning when people I love die. But I can also rejoice that they knew Jesus and are spending eternity with him. I am sad when I realize I have let an area of my life get out of balance through a lack of discipline. But I can rejoice that I now see the truth and am back on track. See what I'm saying? There's always a counterbalance. For all mourning, there is an offsetting reason to celebrate. And although mourning is proper and is even part of our healing, it cannot last forever. We cannot live in a state of mourning over things that have happened that we cannot change. In Christ. There is always a place of new beginnings, and that is good news worth celebrating. Now, if you're dealing with things that cannot change, and there's a, a circumstance, you're mourning the outcome of a circumstance, that you're being eaten alive with regrets because you made a bad choice that brought the bad situation, okay? You can't change it. You can't go back. It is what it is. Do not let the accuser of the brethren, which is the devil, he's the one always reminding us of our mistakes. Do not allow him to keep you in a place of regret and to keep you from moving forward. Mistakes happen. Bad decisions happen. Especially if you're not listening to the Holy Spirit if you're not discerning the voice of the Lord properly, if you're not giving yourself over to wise counsel, Proverbs 20 has several things about wise counsel. Always get wise counsel before you decide. 
if you're not getting wise counsel and you make a mistake, you can regret it and say, man, I should have listened. Okay, you've learned a lesson. Don't let the devil keep you there, rob you of your self-confidence and accuse you, accuse you, accuse you. That's guilt is not from the Lord. That is from the devil to keep you in a place of not moving forward. God wants you to move forward. We have a time of regret, a time of mourning, and now joy comes the next morning. <laughs> okay. Now our trust in him. If you are in a time of mourning, allow yourself to feel those feelings, but don't get stuck there. Don't let the enemy take you to an unhealthy place. Don't get stuck. Trust that God has a plan for you and wants you to have joy the next morning. He does. He wants our lives filled with joy. His plans are to prosper, to not harm, and to give us hope in a future. That's his plan for you. He wants your life and he wants you to have it to the full. A full life is not mired down with grief, depression, mourning. It's not. It's precious to the Lord when his children come home to be with you. You have loved ones that are not in good health and they don't know the Lord. You pray for their salvation. You don't have to be the one to do it unless the Lord opens the door and says, go and tell them about Jesus. Just do it. Okay. When you know you are lifting them in prayer or you're planting seeds of joy, not judgment, planting seeds of salvation, letting them know the Lord loves them. You know, you've done your part and the Lord's word does not return void. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word today. And Father, right now I take authority over every spirit of grief and depression and death that people may be bound by. I loose their mind, will, and emotions from every assignment of the enemy to keep them in a place of grief and mourning. We thank you, Lord, for your promises. There is a time to grieve and a time to laugh. Father, we thank you for joy, replacing the grief with joy for those, Lord God, who have begun some grieving, who are grieving the loss of a loved one, the death of a loved one, who are grieving uh, a betrayal, who are grieving a poor decision, a mistake. Father, we thank you that you can walk them through that. And we trust you, Holy Spirit, to bring your comfort, to bring your joy, to bring your word, Father. I thank you, Father, that you are the anchor of our souls. Thank you, Father, for walking me through my time of mourning. Thank you, Lord, for helping me to stand firm and to move past the grief into joy. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. I hope you decide to like and subscribe. Click that notification bell. It's Friday, so I'm definitely doing a couple of shop with me's. I hope you check it out. Um, and please feel free. I prayed this morning for those who have requested prayer. Uh, I believe Donna requested prayer for her family. So I lifted you and your family up this morning in prayer and last night when I saw it. So uh, feel free to leave comments. And those who, who want to reach out to me personally, I do put my email address um, in the, um, description box. You can reach out to me that way, though. I'm going to say right now, I'm not a licensed counselor in any stretch of the imagination. I will prayerfully take your consideration because there was somebody who said she wanted some advice and I'm not really comfortable giving advice because I don't know every aspect of everyone's life and nor do I think I'm that smart. But I will prayerfully lead you to scripture that I think will help you in that direction. You know, the word of God has the answer for everything. And so feel free to reach out to me that way. I can't guarantee you're going to get a timely answer from me because I'm still trying to clean up my inbox. But that's the way to reach out to me personally. Okay, God bless you and you have a wonderful day. Bye until next time.